Welcome back. Uh, the monetary policy yesterday pushed yields uh, on tenure down by about 10, 10 basis points to 744 uh, more than 10 actually and uh, if you looked at the move over the last two, two or three days that's that's almost a 125 basis cut that you have got in the tenure uh, we were trading at uh, 7.65 7.7 not so long ago maybe three days back umesh Rivankar, the managing director of sriram transport finance company has joined us on the phone line uh, good morning umesh thank you very much for joining us uh, well firstly uh, at the end of the policy what is your sense about uh, funding both cost and availability um, see as far as cost is concerned i think uh, uh, there is no further uh, movement uh, upwards mm. it has remained constant for nearly now month mm. so that's a good and uh, availability is definitely better uh, banks are definitely uh, looking into the proposals and uh, uh, we did uh, uh, raise uh, uh, some money uh, in the uh, last uh, one month mm. so business is as usual for us mm. only the increased cost we are able to pass it on to the customer mm. right now so can, that is the yeah can you just uh, uh, try and extrapolate how things may look over the next four months there is a promise of 1.2 lakh crore of omo purchases by rbi they almost promised that we will do 40000 crore every month and uh, you have this uh, positive shadow that maybe on in the february policy you're going to hear the word neutral uh, and if the inflation number undershoots maybe a cut with all this positivity going you think your next uh, money raising can be even cheaper yeah post january i believe it should become cheaper uh, in the month of december probably it will remain at present level mm. but uh, last quarter it should become uh, uh, availability also would be much better and uh, cost also could come down by 20 30 basis point okay, okay. Uh, mr ivankar good morning i also wanted your thoughts on what's happening with demand because you know um, in the month of november we've seen an unanticipated fall in the commercial vehicle sales especially medium and heavy commercial vehicles from the financing end what are you picking up uh, yeah definitely the uh, see uh, post diwali normally you have a lull period for 10 to 15 days mm -hmm. it is uh, every year is naturally uh, happening and uh, it picks up in the month of December. Uh, December it picks up because the manufacturer gives special discounts to push the models. Mm. The model which is uh, produced in the year, they would like to finish it off mm. and have no inventory. Mm. So therefore, the, there is a special uh, push in the month of December. Mm. And November being uh, fall is uh, almost certain every year so i don't really mm. attribute much towards that but However, actually this uh, time mr evankar you know after 15 months of a, a double digit growth we've seen an almost 18 percent fall in november for the entire industry you're saying that it is routine and it's just a, a one or two month blip in, no, no, yeah this is uh, one thing is uh, nbfc have not been very aggressive that's also there mm. when i say not aggressive everyone has increased the interest rate plus the margin requirement so that uh, also would have uh, the, reduced the demand to some extent mm -hmm. but uh, i think uh, the, the uh, november numbers coming down uh, post uh, uh, september sales uh, high sale numbers are quite routine what you're saying is that uh, financials as an industry banks and non-banks have become cautious yes oh okay Okay, uh, just another question uh, uh, with respect to uh, policy as well. I, uh, sorry, not so much <laughs> with respect to policy. We have a report from Credit Suisse saying that uh, tractor uh, purchases are likely to continue and won't peak off even after two, three years of good sales. Do you finance tractors and are you seeing any trends uh, higher or lower in terms of uh, number of tractors financed? Yeah, we do finance tractors, but uh, our focus is mostly on uh, used tractor. Mm. So the demand for us is continuous. I, I do, did not see any fall in demand. And uh, the rise in the tractor demand coming out of a good monsoon for last three years and better uh, rural um, uh, economy, I mm. should say. 
but however there were some uh, uh, challenges in the central india where mm -hmm. rainfall was less than expected okay mm -hmm. just i just have one more question you said interest rate increase has impacted demand but do you see higher delinquencies or higher defaults which could put press pressure on asset quality of financiers um, over the next 3 to 6 months no it has nothing to do with asset quality asset quality is totally linked to the uh, the economic condition not the supply of uh, Uh, mm -hmm. liquidity because uh, uh, the banks and industry when they become cautious automatically the credit quality will improve mm -hmm. so it should not actually deteriorate okay uh mr revankar your q2 uh, growth rate was 20 21% in assets under management uh, would second half be milder uh yes it has to be a little milder uh, but uh, overall we had indicated 18 to 20% AUM growth for the year we are hopeful of uh, reaching that because oh. we i do expect a good uh, quarter uh, mm. in the fourth fourth quarter should be very good okay we'll leave it at that thank you very much uh, mr mesh revankar for joining us with your thoughts on the policy we have uh, another important person from the banking uh, space b prasanna head global markets group of icici bank joins us now uh, good morning prasanna thanks much uh, well first uh, the full toss uh, you you have a, a a big cut in inflation of 120 basis points in forecast uh, near dovish language that we are already in neutral and promise of uh, 1.2 lakh crore of more omo purchases uh, how do you see the yields now this month and this year this fiscal So I think uh, Lata, you uh, put it right. The highlights of the policy yesterday for me there were three important points. The first was the huge revision in the inflation estimate, which is as much as uh, or more than the current year's uh, estimate lower, which was by 120 basis points. I was more surprised by the next year's inflation estimate coming down by 70 basis points. Mm -hmm. So that gives the comfort that inflation is unlikely to exceed 4.2 or 4 percent thereabouts for the entire of next uh, one year from today. So that's the first one. The second and third are the statements made by the governor on the. Uh, Uh, the policy the stance uh, and the action which is likely to happen if uh, inflation were to uh, undershoot or even if it were to subscribe to the same trajectory that they have uh, uh, put out yesterday and the statement by the deputy governor saying that uh, open market operations are likely till march so putting all these three together i would say that the uh, bond market has been uh, pleasantly uh, surprised and uh, that's the reason why the bond yields actually uh, fell yesterday and uh, are likely to uh, fall a little bit more Uh, because there is the view with all the market participants that inflation is anyway expected to uh, come soft over the next two, three, or four months. Okay, so when you say, uh, Prasanna, hi, good morning. This is Sonia here. When you say yields are likely to fall a bit more, what are you looking at in terms of a range over the next couple of weeks? And what do you think the RBI's next call would be? So my uh, base case uh, call is still for a pause by the Reserve Bank of India. over the next 6 to 9 months so we don't really uh, have penciled in a rate cut uh, in our base case uh, but what we do uh, um, have a view on is uh, the stain a uh, change in the stance by the february policy because of the words used by the governor yesterday plus our view on uh, inflation being very benign so all these put together with a stable 6.5% repo rate and uh, bo uh, bond yields at 10 year bond deals at 7.4 or 7.45 uh, more than adequately compensates for the interest rate structure and given the fact that the demand supply is actually improved with the rbi itself coming in and buying and they have bought 175000 crores by december and they are likely to buy 120000 crores more so they are actually going to take away nearly 60 to 70% of the net borrowing program of the government in the single year so the demand supply is positive plus the rate structure is positive so from that perspective i would expect yields to fall to something in the range of 720 to 725 over a period of time <coughs> okay slr cut uh, all the brokerages have said that banks like yours are big beneficiaries Uh, so um, I wouldn't uh, talk something specific to my bank, uh, Lata. But what I can say is, for the system uh, in general, I think the SLR cut is very positive in an environment where credit is growing fast uh, and uh, deposit growth is not really able to, you know, match up with the kind of credit requirements. Uh, there is a credit deposit wedge which is happening, and uh, the uh, investments is the one which is going to come and take the slack. So to that extent, banks needed uh, wherewithal and space to uh, reduce. Um, Mm. Uh, investments and use that money to fund uh, uh, 
uh, the credit growth and uh, coupled along with the fact that the RBI is actually purchasing bonds from the system, it effectively uh, gives a reasonably good exit route for the banks whichever uh, is facing a, a acute uh, credit uh, shortage, funds for credit uh, growth. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I think it's a good thing and the banks will be able to actually offload excess SLR securities as and when credit demand turns up and will be able to lend to the productive sectors of the economy. Okay. So, yeah. No, uh, so I wanted to ask you more about these external benchmarks. If we have to take a home loan, depending on the 10-year uh, 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 bond or the T-bill, that's good for customers, isn't it? Then logically, it should not be terribly good for banks. Uh, so yeah, it is. It's actually a little. Uh, uh, it's going to be a little confusing for the customer, especially the retail customer. The guideline actually specifies uh, it's more uh, going to be for the retail loans as well as for the uh, very very small uh, sector of uh, corporate uh, sector. Okay. So from that perspective, it's going to be very confusing from the perspective that a you're going to have a very frequent reset of benchmark, and b even the extent of resetting the benchmark both ways upward or downward is going to be quite high because the market rates do not wait for anything and they really change pretty fast. And most of the benchmarks that we have talked about, except for the RBI repo rate, which is not expected to, you know, change as frequently, things like 91-day table and 180-day table is uh, going to, you know, change to evolving situation. So from that perspective, I think it will be a little confusing for customers to take floating rate loan. My suspicion is that uh, they might probably start preferring uh, 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 shorter term fixed rate loans to uh, floating rate loans because of this uh, volatility in the benchmark. But having said that, uh, what the point about what problems banks are going to face is to some extent right that now we have um, um, liabilities which are fixed and we have uh, uh, loans which are going to be uh, floating. So what I again presume here is that the banking system would be a natural uh, receiver in the uh, derivative market because they would be giving uh, loans uh, benchmark to these uh, benchmarks and uh, there will be a, a natural receiving pressure from the banks uh, to come and convert the floating rate loans to fixed rate loans. Okay, just one final question then. Uh, you spoke about how the SLR cut is positive because credit growth is fast. Do you think the worst of the credit growth problem is behind us? I mean, uh, for the last two years, credit growth has been relatively anemic. Now we've suddenly started to see a pickup. You think um, it's better times ahead? So um, I think uh, overall credit growth to a lot of extent in the last two years was the slack was also taken up by the NBFC sector and uh, a lot of other segments of the society. So those kind of, uh, uh, I, I should say, maybe excesses uh, from some sections of the financial uh, uh, intermediation uh, segment is actually now coming back to the banking sector. So to that extent, the growth in the banking sector is going to be good. And even uh, within uh, the banking sector, there will be pockets of, uh, you know, uh, liquidity, uh, pockets of, I mean, there, there could be some banks which are facing uh, uh, liabilities, uh, raising uh, problems, and there could be some banks which have actually lending restrictions. So to some extent, I think it will be benefiting uh, banks which are in a very good position to mobilize deposits as well as in a good position to actually lend. So I just wanted to make one more point mm -hmm. on the on the on the amount of rates uh, rate cuts which are priced into the market. So I heard you, Lata, saying somewhere else that uh, the ten-year uh, GSEC is actually uh, pricing in a couple of uh, rate cut already. No, I said so it has I given you a rate say cut. That it's, uh, nowhere near. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to say that uh, the best uh, benchmark to figure out where the uh, market is pricing in a rate cut is actually the swap market, mm. not the GSEC market, because the GSEC market has a longer duration sure. and it also gets influenced by the demand and supply dynamics. Mm. So from the swap market, if you really see the one year, uh, we had a 75 basis point rate hike expectation just uh, around 45 days ago, mm. and that's got completely reversed to a neutral uh, rate okay. situation for the next one year. And then there are now just one rate hikes priced in in the second year and the third year, okay. and at terminal rate of seven and a half. So that's where we are as far as market pricing is concerned. So if we were to go towards a rate cut kind of a scenario, if things were to evolve, inflation were to fall and people were getting confidence that the governor might end up uh, taking a rate action sometime soon, then we will see market deals falling even more. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, uh, Prasanna, uh, just very quickly, do you think the debt market issues, uh, the, the Reserve Bank said there's no need for a special dispensation. Uh, do you think peace has returned and uh, with this kind of flood of liquidity, we should not really hear about debt market problems. 
so so Lata, it's very difficult. It's ne better ne never to say no in this kind of situation. You don't know where the next problem is going to come from, especially when uh, global markets itself is so volatile. Nobody imagined oil will move from 86 to 60, so so on and so forth. But but having said that, I think broadly, uh, I think the peak problem is behind us. And even I would actually agree with the uh, prognosis of the RBI that the right way to solve this problem is to solve the liquidity at the aggregate level for the banking system rather than to you know take credit calls and for mm. RBI to directly lend to the system. Mm. So from that perspective, I think uh, it's a good move that uh, what RBI is doing is to uh, pumping in liquidity at the aggregate level. And they have also actually increased uh, various sector exposures uh, for banks to, uh, towards NBFCs and towards a few other sectors, which basically means that I will give you liquidity at the overall system level. And whichever bank is having the liquidity and whichever is bank is well capitalized and whichever bank has the necessary risk appetite, both market risk as well as credit risk, those banks can actually go and lend to the uh, uh, to the segments which are probably not getting money at the uh, rate which they were getting, say, two, three months earlier. So it's a credit call. It's more of a solvency issue and it's not a liquidity issue. And uh, um, uh, so that's the reason why RBI is saying that if there is a liquidity issue, I'll be there to stand by it. It is not my job to actually take the credit risk uh, which is what you are supposed to be doing. Okay. okay. That's a big thumbs up for RBI <laughs> from B. Prasanna. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining us. So uh, we've run out of time, but we got some really interesting takeaways from that interview. We will play that through the course of the day as well. For now, take a short break. We'll come back with the pre-opening rates. Five more minutes to go. Top FNO trades lined up with Manoj Murlidharan of Relegia Securities. Also, Devin Choksi of KR Choksi Investment Managers will join in with some long-term stock bets.